I'll tell my personal story and how I got to know Muhammad and from there we'll kind of go through Desert Stars. So I grew up in Jerusalem as a kind of mid-class regular guy coming from a very Zionistic narrative. I'm fifth generation in Israel and that narrative of Israel and, and the establishment of it, as Vic mentioned, kind of from, from the ruins of the Holocaust was very central to my life. Uh, and I, I grew up normally, went to the Tzofim, to the Boy Scouts, joined the IDF, served as a combat officer for several years finished it, went overseas, traveled the world off the beaten track for three years, Kamchatka, Mongolia, Siberia, came back to Israel. In all of this time, I didn't know much about the Bedouin community. I had some stigmas and stereotypes about them that unfortunately many Israelis hold about the Bedouin society is our encounter with them is mainly through the media where you see the extreme of the society. And then about a decade ago, maybe a bit more, I went to travel on an off-road motorbike. And in one of these trips, I saw suddenly a Jeep traveling alongside with me. And I said, all right, whatever, they travel, I travel, it's all good. It took me two minutes to understand that they're not traveling, but chasing me down. They go to me and took me off the path and out of the Jeep came out four young Bedouins, 16, 17 years old kids, and started kind of hassling me and negotiating my bike give it to us, we'll, uh, we'll take it, et cetera, et cetera. I tried to talk my way out of the situation, but unfortunately it didn't work out very well. Two of them went back to their Jeep and brought metal bars, a quite unpleasant situation. They were four, I'm one, metal bars. What these guys didn't know is that when I travel alone, I carry a gun with me. I pulled out my gun, told them, if you wanna be violent, I promise you I can do a better job than you can. Go home, let me go back to my life. And that's how the story ended. They understood it's not the best opportunity, went to the Jeep, drove off. I went on my motorbike, went back home, and all of the stigmas and stereotypes got a face. But then with time, uh, anger came down and I started thinking myself, is this the reality I want to live in? And when I looked around in the Negev, the southern part of Israel, I saw that basically all the Jewish villages are not just villages. They are like fortresses. We surround ourselves with fences and barbed wires and patrols. And all of that is in order to protect ourselves, not from an external enemy, but from ourselves, from the Bedouins who are Israeli citizens, exactly like I am. And that looked crazy to me. And when I understood that this is the reality and that I have no intention of leaving the Negev, but neither do my Bedouin neighbors, I understood that instead of building these walls, we must start building these bridges. Um, I met uh, Matan, it's more than 10 years ago. And for the beginning, he talked about something that I all the time thinking about, but I never define it right. That leadership uh, must be uh, can be the major key for change in my community. And my impact is local impact in Hura. I can make uh, a lot of change, uh, but it is a uh, local impact. And they try to, to bring all the Bedouin uh, to be in this innovative approach to change in community by building a bridge with uh, our neighbors, the Jewish uh, cities built a joint initiative and share the space in the Negev and to look for better place for our kids for the next generation. I know that uh, me and Matan came from different worlds, from different culture, but we are, uh, first of all, human, and, uh, and we are uh, Israeli citizens, and we are facing the same, the same challenge from different angles. Without acting, in this field to bring more people believing to make change bottom up from my community, we can describe the situation, we cannot change this reality. And from that uh, point, we decided uh, to take the things together. And I think I had the big honor to meet uh, Matan and we never thought that we will have a small mission. It is very deep mission, with with with, uh, with many challenges on the on the on the way. 
And, uh, but we believe that both of us, we can build trust with my community and then with the large Israeli community and then with the central government uh, 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 to make a change. But the main point, we believe both of us to build trust in this process, we must build unlimited trust between both of us. And with the time, we, we know that we are have many things to deal with, with no filters. We need to talk about everything. We need to solve everything within very short time. I never, I never thought that I can do this with a Jewish guy. I never meet uh, Matan, and he was uh, like my small brother with difference 20 years old, 20 years between us. And uh, within, I think, Matan one year, I became the sandak of his second son. And uh, we spent not a few meetings. We, we spent together hundreds of hours with painful, with success, with fail. But we know that we are facing to do a, a very good uh, and very huge mission, national mission, to make a change in the Negev for a better place for our second generation. Uh, Desert Stars, it is not another uh, activities in the Bedouin community. It is a strategic organization to bring a mass of leaders crossing all the tribes, all the villages, to make change within the Bedouin community, from inside the Bedouin community, but using the tools of the Israeli society as a part of the Israeli society. We never thought that we want to make incubator for the Bedouin to make a success in area, and that's it. We want to make a large and strategic change in Bedouin community as a part of the Negev, as a part of the Israeli society. Growing up during World War II, uh, my family loved and admired Israel. It was a safe place for Jews and the embodiment of the moral values I was raised with. Fast forward to the year 2004, uh, through wars and intifadas and hopes for peace, uh, but basically nothing but strife in the Middle East land. The original dream of a democratic state for Israel undermined by politicians from both sides whose daily actions reinforce the idea of first and second class citizens. It was easy to get discouraged. I wondered what if anything could bring fair and sustainable peace. Clearly political leadership on all sides had failed to resolve the conflict. I thought maybe focusing on work at the grassroots level might form the basis of a just and lasting peace and could build a constituency that demanded of their respective leaders a fair peace. And that idea was the basis of the prize when we formed it 19 years ago, that, that, that notion of ground up grassroots activity. It's now a really, um, an honor having spent the last six months speaking with Mohammed and Matan to um, present them with the 2023 IIE Goldberg Prize for Peace in the Middle East and um, for their work as individuals and for their work as a team building a new generation of Bedouin leadership. So thank you very much for Vic for this initiative and selecting us and thank you for the uh, organization as a whole for making this happen. I have one thing that I do in every speech that I give in Desert Stars and I tell people, take a minute of silence and look around you. Look at the people, look at the diversity, look at what is happening here this is what Israel can look like and should look like. And if we'll work hard enough together, that will be what Israel will look like. 
And I think that in that sense, Desert Stars really models it very beautifully from the inner circle of the diversity of Bedouin tribes, which is an impossible mission to bring together. And yet in Desert Stars, it's happening. And then you widen the circles to the Jewish community, as Muhammad said, to different factions of the Jewish community, government, army, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really, really unique in that sense that uh, we are able to build all these bridges and, and bring people together. We hope that the next five years, most of the employees and the leaders in Desert Stars will be the graduated from Desert Stars. We are starting this, uh, this uh, 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 pushing our graduated to be a part of our uh, uh, leaders in the organization. I told them the uh, uh, leadership incubator uh, uh, program uh, candidates all the time, the successful of the organization that you replace me, replace Matan, and other people and leading all the organization to a better place and continue from this point. This is starting to happen. I hope the most, uh, uh, the majority of the, the, the leaders of the organization will be from graduated women and men from the community. My kids, I have five boys. The second, the, my second son, Muhammad uh, said it, but he said it in Hebrew. So I'll repeat, the godfather who held them in the breath was Muhammad. Um, so, you know, for them, suddenly it becomes integral in their life. They know how to pronounce uh, Arab names. And, and so my personal life, it flipped completely. Uh, because my, as, as a family, I, I developed a whole new, you know, I didn't have a preview of this world. And, and I understand how, how little do we know about each other and, and how much we need to share these stories and to give hope. And I think that in Desert Stars, it's another thing that we do. We bring many Jewish groups from whatever types to, to come and see and learn and hear and say, you know, the, the, the strongest thing you can do to a paradigm is to crack it. Because once you crack it and you allow people to have question marks, then they, they rethink all that they do. And I think that all, much of what we're trying to do is to crack this paradigm for many, many different groups that are coming in order for, to allow them to see a different reality than the one they know.